All I'm doing is just to say welcome. And if you look at the first page here, and for those who arrived early, I'm sure you already read this, you would see that the reason we're here is very simple. So that the years in school do not become the years of cram, pass, forget, and then you start trying to look for a job and then you get frustrated if you don't get one. That the years in school become the years invested in yourself and in your future. And to do that, today we have, as you can see on the program, we've brought the best people who can talk to you about this topic. And they will definitely do justice to that. So I will get out of their way. And what I will do now is invite uh, our partner on campus here. I'll first of all invite Dr. Niron Luaranti, who has been helping to coordinate the Tent and Great Affair project on campus here. And I'm sure he would also go ahead and introduce after his welcome remarks, he will introduce the, the HOD and the dean uh, since they are partners here on campus. So, welcome, grab the best you can, and please take advantage of the faculty that we have here today. You're welcome. So, when you said what you want to say, I said, this is a good idea, and if we can run with this almost immediately, and for the next uh, for four weeks, there was no comment from him. By February, he sent a proposal, and when I went to the proposal, I was so glad and I was so thrilled that yes, it's not just going to start the program, they have mapped out the next five years as it were in detail what is going to happen, the vision, the ideas, every year, what they expect and what they are expecting that you as participants of this program are going to do. So it's all that it's I was thinking about that this is a complete pattern. And the details of it was so interesting. And I had to start working on this. Uh, we discussed with the then HOD of Computer Science and Engineering Department, uh, Professor Ia Adonu, who unfortunately, uh, unfortunately cannot be here today because he's on Sabbath and he's out of the effect. Well, when, when I discussed with him, he was so thrilled about it. And also, we pushed it on. We sent the look at the details, add the actual input, and after which, uh, we sent it back to Benga that we are okay with this. So Benga forwarded an MOU. And uh, because we are just a small unit of a big organization, we have not sent the MOU to the legal team of the university. The legal team looked at it. Okay, there was no commitment that the university cannot handle. He wrote us back that yes, it's okay. So it's on that premise that we signed the MOU establishing this program. Um, we have, have seen the, the, the desire in the heart of this year. In fact, right now, when I discuss this with some part three and part four students, they are, uh, they are happy that I cannot approve them. And I want to let you know, I know some of them are here. Um, you have privilege to be going through this program. And I want you to take full advantage of it. To have the people who gathered here this morning, uh, the next three days, it's going to be very impactful. And I wish you can take big advantage of this. And at the end of the day, because our desire at the end of the day, you would not be part of the adventure plan. You would be part of those that have been given out the job. Thank you very much. I therefore would like to welcome all the great Nigerian students who are here. I am proud that there are many institutions that we are expected, expecting to see here. And uh, the institutions come in, I hope, will recognize the potential. Uh, the number one potential is not in the lectures you listen to, it's in the networks that this occasion provides. Before now, you never knew you would meet. Now, you are already meeting. Even though in difference, we have already been confined to the geography of this hall. And I hope we are going to break all the partitions that I see existing between us now so that we get to know people, more people than we knew before we came here. Uh, I've seen the way it is. The ladies are seated close to each other. The gentlemen are also sitting close to each other. 
I hope by the end of the day, the season will have changed a little bit uh, for the right reasons. <laughs> and uh, I also hope that it will not be our institution versus your institution. There will have been maybe people whose first names uh, Mark would have met. I say, I too am Nick. I'm not Nick. <laughs> but uh, I also hope that people whose interests match would also have met, exchange phone numbers, and possibly begun relationships that will uh, be uh, treasured over the years. This, I believe, even though the, uh, the organizers have not sent me to do that, this is one of their reasons for uh, calling you. And of course, minus the resource person, this coming will have been any other kind of And it doesn't have to be in it could have been by the beach, uh, where we have from. But because it's here now, it's, we, wanted, we wanted you to meet these people here and other resource persons they are bringing. I want to thank our uh, international guests, uh, me and uh, Tom Davis. Uh, we appreciate you quite a lot. So it is my pleasure to welcome you to 2012 Tech Saturday event on the theme In and Out of Africa being organized by the Paradigm Initiative in Nigeria in collaboration with Obama Foreign University. The goal is to expose the students, the technology students in particular, to technology, business, leadership, which are requirements for innovation, particularly targeted at ICT. I, I was here when the day was starting, and honestly, there is no case in that this program is coming in at a very good time. Especially when you see a lot of our students, you know, walking around the street looking for jobs. In the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, uh, there is a course that I usually uh, take to challenge the students, and I tell them that it will be a shame for anyone who has been under my teaching or my tutelage on that course to still go around the street you know, looking for jobs. Because while I finished school, uh, it was a time that uh, the government decided that there wasn't going to be jobs anymore you know, for people that are just finishing school. And the little that I learned from that course, I took with me you know, around this campus because I got married to a lecturer. And I didn't have a job. It's not easy for somebody who's very nice. So I kept knocking the doors of the different people around the campus. I don't have a project. I can write proposal. I advertise myself. I told them what I was capable of doing. I could write programs. I could analyze data. I could interpret the results. And honestly, at the end of uh, the three years that I had nothing, Coming in regular, I was better out than a lecturer, an assistant lecturer then, with my husband. The salary, the money I was bringing in was so short that I would not pay. Uh, the university was paying me. And with this, I want to say that there's no point. You have finished your own science and engineering, you should go out and seek jobs. You know, you can't go and seek jobs if you want the experience. Of an organization for success, people. The tools are available to you. Please make welcome my personal mentor, <laughs> our guest speaker for the day, and of course, a very good friend of this initiative, Nick Jacobian. Uh, can be replicated 
a million or a billion times over all over the world for essentially zero. zero. Uh, Facebook is, a, you know, is probably a great example. I, I assume everybody here has used Facebook or knows about Facebook. I mean, I think Google, everyone's had to use Google, right? So, so the, the great thing about Google and, and Facebook is that there's, there's nothing to ship, there's nothing to build. It, it's, it's all in, in, on the internet. And it's, uh, it's zero cost to expand your markets all over the, all over the world. And that's, you know, that's what's obviously made Mark Zuckerberg millions of dollars, and, you know, and the guys at Google uh, billions of dollars also. But that's also what gives everyone here in this, in this room the opportunity to, you know, to, to make billions of dollars. Uh, there's a billion opportunities out there. Uh, with, you know, with 7 billion people in the world, uh, the, the, the opportunities are really out there for, you know, for somebody to come up with the idea, create the idea, create the, create the, the solution, and then go out there and build it and, and sell it to the world. So I really do think that, uh, uh, you know, that there's opportunities. I think there's opportunities all over the world. Like, I still believe there's lots of opportunities in the United States, but I, but I think that uh, that Africa and Nigeria in particular have some, some great opportunities. And you know, all of you in, the, in this room here uh, have the opportunity to really create the, the next great, uh, uh, great thing. And I want you to hear me again as well. There is a radio station that all of us listen to. It's the reason we are here today. It is the most popular radio station on Earth. You can see it up there. What's it called? WII. Can you see it? What's it called? You didn't know that. Well, you heard it from here. The word I means what it is for me. You won't believe it. We're going to see now the web comes. Isn't that always the case? Thank you. So, when we talk about the benefits of the offer, you must think what are people going to get from this thing I'm building? Are you with me? That's where it starts. Similarly, we have to think about all the other things around it. You know. So, don't go and try and build a nuclear power plant. You know, you don't have to get a power plant. But you come and find it. So, as you cross the borders and ask questions, I think it's a bottom line of that. The last thing I want to leave you with on proposition is called the elevator pitch. How many people here have heard that term before, elevator pitch? Okay. The elevator pitch is very simple. The reason they call it elevator pitch is they say, imagine, okay, you are in the sixth floor of a building. And just as we are about to enter the elevator, building 10,000 feet. You have from sixth floor to ground floor to tell you your idea to see if you do once. That's why it's called the elevator pitch. Okay? You must be able to deliver your idea. 90 seconds. Three minutes is too long. Okay, what's that? Come on, come on. Tell me, 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 and then by the time you go, you tell you have 15 minutes or so. <laughs> quick, quick, you do your work, you get out. Now, the elevator page, and you get all of this, it must be concise, it must be clear, compelling, okay? Credible, conceptual, concrete, customized, consistent, and conversational. You see, I like that. See, 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 see. You make your elevator pitch that way, then you can engage with that person. And don't forget, it's not always, the elevator pitch is not always about investors. If you're going to build a team of other people to join you, you must be able to convince them very quickly as to why they should, you know, join your team and join your company and help you with this. Okay.
would like to tell you no in lots. Um, they're going to tell you that no, it's not, it's not possible to get it done. They're going to tell you that your project doesn't make sense. Um, they're going to tell you that uh, it's not going to have the impact that it's supposed to have. And I always think of Steve Jobs. I know we've, we've talked about so many successful entrepreneurs today, but I always talk to people about Steve Jobs who invented Apple. And the fact that he was actually fired from the company that he founded uh, before he had to return and take it away, it's not the most valuable company in the world, I think. It's more valuable than GE, I think. Yes. So, but he was actually fired from that company before he was brought back to take the company to the next level. So there are a lot of people that I want to tell you that your idea stinks, that it sucks, that it doesn't make sense. But if you believe in it, if you believe in the project and you're willing to take constructive criticism, not only from, you know, a slew of advisors or some of your uh, colleagues and your friends, and you're willing to tweak it, and you're willing to even have it evolve, you're not stuck with that idea. Oh, this app is going to save world longer. Okay, well, how is it going to save world longer? You know, and you're not willing to basically deviate a little bit in terms of the way that app is going to be rolled out, and that's when you will actually decide what you will But if you understand that this is what is evolved almost every single day, and you're willing to take um, constructive feedback from people around you, Maybe we see that uh, manifest in something in something in the With the mobile telephone today, if you're a jamming and I need to reach you, I just dial your email address. That's where we're going now. It's all possible with the data. So the unique thing about domain is that it's easier for people, it's easier for people to remember. I know your name. That's all the information I need. And if I also know you that your name is your email address, like if your name is like Benga Shesson, or if his email address is Benga Shesson at Benga at Shesson dot NG, it's just his last email. I already know his email. I don't need to know his number, because I can always reach him with his email. So that's where they're going. And you have the opportunity to create that whole platform. You know, the rest of the world has to stuck with the number, mobile number, all this. The new technology, it's going to be presence independent. It could be anywhere. Just like I can send you email in the middle of the night, and if you are online, you get it immediately. You need to stop. If the skip the balance is fine, you get it very shortly. So that's the whole new area. Uh, so yeah, keep going. So for, for us, we feel like the AG is a platform for creating wealth. And you can imagine how that will work. You create the new set of mobile apps. You know, I don't have to tell you how computer, uh, computer savvy people. Tablet is the future. I have been using my laptop now. I remember my tablet. You have a bunch of them, Android, Apple, whatever, Nokia, Windows, they're all coming. More and more of this coming. That's going to be your communication device. For making phone calls, if some of you have figured out how to make phone calls to your friends everywhere without paying the family charges, right? So that's the future. So just take that away from the computer and put it on, on your palm, okay? We can design, go back to this. We can design uh, innovative programs on the, on, uh, on the mobile platform for your use. You can also uh, create jobs for your fellow students. Okay, I have one of my nephews is here, uh, maybe not here, but he's in university. And he tells me that he makes his bit of money by uh, helping people to download and share it with them, you know. So, I mean, like, how do you get into all this? But the fact of the matter is that you can figure out how to make money on the internet the legitimate way. Okay, there are so many legitimate ways to make money. You don't have to go to the fraudulent way. They have, they have very little way. Write programs, share it, okay? You know, the people that started peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking, they were just playing. Just, let's do a small network and create a program. Napster, I mean, I mean you remember Napster. And eventually, they got bored. They got into trouble, but they got bored, they made money. So, point, point I'm trying to make, the people that are creating all this stuff, they're young folks like you, all right? I don't have to tell you, Max, to go back, you know how it is. All those big boys that you see today, they, are all, they all started very young, okay? Nigeria, if you can just think of it, you have 100 and, between the age of 14 and 30. Between the age of 14 and 30, there are over 30 million people 
30 million people, if my statistics is correct. All you need to do is to go out and create a program for 1 million people and sell it for $1. How much money are you going to make? A million dollars. I don't have to say more. You've got the market here. You don't have to worry about the US. You have enough market here. Don't worry about South Africa or Kenya. Here, right here, Nigeria, you've got the market. Now, who's ready to fail? Okay. Also, a few people are ready to fail. Who's really ready to fail? Okay. Who knows how to ride a bicycle? Okay. When you learn how to ride a bicycle, did you fall? Okay. That's how business is as well. You know, there are so many things that you will be disappointed in, so many things that you put a lot of work in and you're not going to get results out. That's just how business is. And you just have to hang in there. And, well, you need to focus and you need to see the bigger picture. So if one thing doesn't work out, the next thing will. So you just need to keep on moving. And I know that that sounds easy, but it's actually very, very hard because sometimes you get so demotivated because you think, no, but this idea is fantastic and if they do this, then it will be really, really good. Yeah, that's great and it probably would, but the person who has the money doesn't see it that way. So if they don't see it that way, it's not going to happen that way unless you somehow find the money for it. Now, that doesn't mean that you should chuck away anything that people discard and that they say, oh, this isn't good or anything like that. I'll give you an example. About three years ago, my business partner and I um, designed a concept called iConnect Boss. And it's basically a moving ICT suite that can be used to teach children in rural areas um, ICT and also other subjects because it basically it's like a, almost like a container that moves around and has computers installed and, you know, there's a teacher in there that can teach you different things. Now, we pitched this concept to a lot of companies and all of them said, eh, it's, it's a great, good idea, but um, you know, we're not sure it can work in Nigeria. And in our heads, we're like, but why? We don't understand. Like, what, what won't work about it? We figured out power supply. It's self-sustainable, we figured out the business model behind it, we figured out basically all the loose ends, every question that we got after every single pitch, we went back to the drawing table and we figured it out. So we were like, okay, no, this works, and it is proven also that it worked in other countries. So we have our costing, we have a 50-page proposal, and nobody wants this thing. This is three years ago. Now, last month, we actually won the um, Etisalat Prize for Innovation for the best, you know, most innovative idea for this same concept that everybody told us was rubbish. Okay, so just because people tell you your idea is rubbish doesn't mean that it is. Now, this is a quote from Peter Drucker. He says, there will always be need for some selling, always. But the aim of marketing is to make selling superfluous. The aim of marketing is to show and understand the customer so well that the product or service fits him and sells itself. Ideally, marketing should result in a customer who is ready to buy. All that should be needed is to make the product or service available. Do you understand? That means that you understand your consumers or the, the people you want this product to be for. You understand them so well that the way you put together this product, once they come across it, they need minimal selling to pick it up. And this is a challenge for marketers. The truth is sometimes we over-advertise things because they are not well put together. So things, when you put them together, they are so well put together, they sell themselves. I don't want you to leave Ife, whatever school you are, as a techie. Just a geek that doesn't understand human beings. You all know Steve Jobs. You do? You all know, I hope you all know, that for about a year or two of his life, he upped and went to India. I was walking around barefoot, watching and understanding people knowing about life, what makes people tick, what do they want. If you make things simple, will people respond, yes. 
And these are some of the things that this man carried inside himself. And he forced his company to create products that were so simple that my one-year-old son, when he was one, he could operate an iPad. He's two. He goes to YouTube himself now. He can take pictures himself. I mean, there's nothing that boy can do with an iPad. A product so simple that even one year, two years can figure out. What is this? Was that, is that a tech company or is that a tech company? It's almost the ultimate tech company. But they are where they are and they'll probably still remain there if they understand the customer. What the customer wants, how he wants it, better than everybody else. I Thank wish you. I had this kind of opportunity when I was in school. Um, I did my first degree in the University of Illinois. I studied Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering. Uh, most of what we learned then, we did not know this side of engineering. The truth of the matter is that if you keep doing technical, technical, technical things, chances are that your peak will be what? Technical director, wherever you are. Did anybody get that? If you keep doing technical, technical, you don't know what it means to be an entrepreneur, you don't know what it means to make money. Chances are that the peak of your career will be the technical stuff. When it comes to making the decisions, you're not likely to be involved because all you know is about the technical, this technical, that. All right, so I want to encourage you. This is an opportunity you cannot afford to waste. Don't be in a hurry to say, look, I want to drive, I don't want to drive a Hummer next year. Take it easy. Because the most lasting wealth that we've always, almost always seen took some time to build up. And the fact is that even the people that you call overnight success, even the, the, the musicians that you said, oh, this guy does it it's one day, you know. We were talking about Meiji, and uh, I was talking about Meiji the other day. And someone was telling me, one of his friends was telling me that this guy had been singing since he was in school. He was, we were begging for a show. And now all of us are singing, uh, what's his name? I say, I say, sure, boy. All I go, I push men up and down town. <laughs> but this guy has been literally begging his way and working and working and honing his skill and improving how he offered value and entertainment to the world. And that's what you've got to do. And that's the only lesson I have to you today. Entrepreneurship isn't about, it's about a lot of things. It's about a lot of strategy. But in the end of it, if you have nothing that you're offering to the world, you can't use strategy to pack it nothing. So you've got to have something that you're offering. And if you're offering something, I'm telling you that the world will find you out. There are too many people in this world who are offering nothing. So if everybody in this world, if only two people, if everybody in this world offers something, it's more than all the students that are in this school. So determine to yourself, I'm going to be useful to the world, to people around me, and I'm going to offer people value, and you will watch your life take off. Thank you very much. I read computer engineering. I wanted to become a software developer so badly. You know, I go to the internet, I read about, I read the Google story, I read Facebook, I read Twitter, you know. You read about the wonderful, beautiful stories of these guys and how they made it so much. And you wanted to be like them. I mean, and we wanted so badly to be like them. So at the point, I wanted to become a software engineer. Then, you know, I read a couple of more, you know, a couple more stories about why Larry Ellison, you know, is doing so good with Oracle, and then my SQL is good, and you know, and all of a sudden I wanted to become, you know, the best database engineer. I didn't have a focus. I didn't exactly know what I wanted. I just wanted to be, at, I just wanted to be best at something, but I didn't know. And in, over the course of that period, I was wasting time. I was wasting energy. Now, next slide, please. My question, okay, this is the right slide. Look at this question. What are the chances that a Usain Bolt will win a Nobel Prize in theoretical physics and also win World Footballer of the Year? What are the chances? You say both. We all, we all know you say both. The fastest man in the world. Error. Oh, okay. The compiler is going to give an error. Okay. Now that is it. When you are trying to become many things at the same time, you're not going to become the best, you know, at it. 
you're not going to become the best at anything. You are going to be good, you know. There are two entrepreneurs that I like compared Alex Bell and Thomas Edison. Right? And the reason the difference is Edison was a smart man, right? He built all sorts of crazy stuff. He had all sorts of patents. Many times Thomas Edison would produce something and sell it off. Right? So he would, he would say, and a classic example, he built this ridiculous device, I don't know what it's called. And he wanted to sell it for $50,000, I think, at the time. So he said, you know what, instead of selling this thing for 50 k I might as well just um, put it up for an auction. And then he earned 10 times as much as he thought. And what that told him from the start is that as an inventor, as an innovator, he tended to undervalue some of the things he built. Right? And the value was never known until he put that thing forward in an open market. And then people were willing to pay all of a sudden 10, 20 times uh, that amount. I remember someone here talking about the incandescent bulb and saying that everything developed the incandescent bulb. Now, you guys all have mobile phones, so you can fact check all of this. But the reality is that there are tons of incandescent bulb owners. Everyone lays claim to I built the first one. Right? But the thing Edison had was his only thing burn off after 5 minutes. Right? His only thing burn off after 10 minutes. He was able to develop one that was a commercial value. And for me, because of the bank, I mean, the story is very simple. I don't care what your invention is. You are not innovating until you create value. It's very simple. So invent all you can. So for example, go and build a fancy cyber cafe, right? That people can walk into, have coffee, all the work. At the end of the day, the work has to be on cyber cafes, right? So you must almost be at the point where you are thinking, what's the next best thing? Because the reality is that everyone talks about first mobile advantage, but the biggest businesses of today are businesses that thrive on next mobile advantage. I've been following and a lot of the conversations here, and I have been learning a lot from the conversations here as well. And a lot of people have advised, you know, there's been questions about, you know, if I'm doing a business and I'm studying, and the advice has generally been, you know why you're here in school, okay? And that is to get a certificate. And then you get that certificate. If that is your main goal, then you should focus on that. And I remember, you know, there was also this response to that was given that uh, for the guy who had the book who was working on that, you know, if you don't have an immediate plan on how you're going to, you know, make earn a living from what you're doing, which is your passion, then the better advice is to actually stick with what you are here for and finish your program. I'm a technology person, and um, I didn't learn a lot of the things I know and I apply today, um, you know, through the academic program, but I learned them while I was in campus. Edward was talking about uh, a time when there was this period when people were learning stuff and the internet came in and there was like this explosion in people going out and, you know, acquiring knowledge on their own. And during, during that particular era, there was a particular time when there was this extended break. It, was, it, it actually lasted for about 11 months. Uh, we fondly call it the 11 months break. And that period gave quite a number of people, including the guy he was talking about who is currently working in Google. His name is uh, Audrey Itoki. You can go and look him up. And you can actually verify for yourself, you know, a lot of the things that Edward talked about today and some of the things I'm going to be talking about today. And it happens that a lot of us who were in that, who were around at that particular period and happened to have taken advantage of some of these breaks, per se, actually end up doing something laudable today. So there are going to be opportunities for you. There are going to be times when it will look like What's happening? You know, they've sent us home and we've not been called back to school and what have you. And you may look at it as being, these people are wasting my time. However, you have to understand that these are some of the breaks that some of us have actually capitalized on and have built ourselves into what we are today. My first love, my first passion was music. Um, so, me and my friends in the UK, we are. Uh, in the early 90s, we thought, how come we've never actually seen a magazine written by black people, about black people? That's two things. One, looks good, and the second one is actually well written. Is it not possible? 
that's what, that's what we thought to ourselves. And our, our basic premise was actually, we can do this better than anyone else is doing it. Um, you know, uh, people ask, uh, someone asked a question about capital, asked a question about, uh, oh, how can I do a business uh, if I don't have access to capital? Uh, well, do one that can get you some capital. Because one of the things that investors, and you know, the guy from Stanford pretty much said it, one of the things an investor is looking for is, if you're going to commit to the project, if you will do, you know, if you put, if you put your money down into something, you are definitely going to see it through. If you put my money down into something, well, you can walk away from it any time. And like everyone has said, um, ideas are a dime a dozen. There's probably two people in the world I can think of at the top of my head that are the first people to do something. Unfortunately, I couldn't get, uh, do my, uh, my pictures. I wasn't going to do death by PowerPoint. But one of them was Neil Armstrong. He was the first man to stand on the moon. Definite first. The other one is the guy that jumped off that uh, uh, did the, the high dive, you know, the sky dive, the high earth sky dive, did it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Definite first. Apart from that, can anybody remember the person who invented Windows? I said Windows that we look out of, not Bill Gates. Because that was a huge innovation at one time. So, that, that, you know, my definition of an entrepreneur is that, that a couple of things. One, the ability to be disruptive. Yeah, so in other words, the ability to look at how things are, uh, are done and think, I could do that better. Yeah, in, in this way, or, or whatever. The second one is actually the ability to learn from failure. Yeah, because even if you have a successful business, you start up a successful business, the lessons that you learn from things that go wrong are much more valuable than lessons you will ever learn from things that go right. Yeah? What is the thing that is going to create the opportunity? It is the nexus between content. Jerry here. I mean, I'm pitching him for business right now. And I'm telling you, not even not here in a different environment. But he's a writer, so he's a creative person as well as a, a person that works in his business, right? So he's content. He's a content creator. I don't know. There may be some graphic artists here that develop comics. There may be people here who write, people who sing, people who think. Whatever it is, your creation, your creative content, that's fine. I, on the other hand, is launching a social media network next year, and I know all of you are going to hear about it. You know, and so he's a platform, right? So this is content, and this is technology, right? But what defines all of it that makes it unique is culture, and that's here, that's what we do. So that's what we we're saying earlier. If you just come and do Twitter version two, nobody cares because I already got it. But maybe you did, I don't know. The guys at CC Hub have something called a fecal. I mean, I'm loving it. I, I like the fact that I think that in this country, up until 10, 10 days ago, I thought there were only two, two hubs, two technology hubs in Nigeria. I just found out that Lagos State just set up a Lagos Innovation Council. I think Toby Davis was here speaking. He's on the council. Okay? There are 18 hubs in Lagos. Okay? Some of these guys are already beginning to get funding and backing. So if you are engineering and technology people, who are going to be writing codes, developing apps. There are places for you to be dealing with right now. You, have, you are blessed with the amount of knowledge and access you have. That's just the truth of the matter because when I was in university, A, the internet didn't even exist. I invest in companies and I have, I have people that have been working a couple of years. They come and pitch to me about investing in their businesses. They value their businesses at, at millions of dollars. And in some cases, they're not even as prepared as you guys are today. So, so really, a really great job. I think, mean, you know, one, one of the things I'll, I'll give is sort of one of the overall feedbacks that we gave to people was that you need to um, you know, think differently. You've got to come up with a, you know, you've got to come up with an idea that not everybody is already doing. There's a lot of ideas out there. There's a lot of things going on. You got to think from a different angle. I think if you come up with something that is different enough, there's a lot of market expandability to, to that. And sometimes it takes a lot of creativity, and it takes, we talked about this a lot yesterday, it takes a lot of failure. You know, many of the things that we thought and marked up as like sort of good ideas and you know, rank them number 10, is you're probably gonna do the research and it's gonna turn out that it's, it, it sucks, and you know, it's not a very good idea. 
um, that's going to be the failure that, ha that happens. And it'll, it'll happen in your life many times over. And the key is to, you know, to go back to work, you know, come up with the, ne you know, the next idea, come here next year and present, you know, present again. Um, failure, we talked about yesterday, is a great way to, to learn and it's a great way to, uh, you know, to create something. So I appreciate everybody that presented to us um, and really looking forward in the future to uh, you know, hearing more and see seeing more of your ideas. Gradually, we are coming to the end of this program. It has been three days of intense activities and three days of uh, rubbing minds together and doing a lot of things. And the third runner up for the inter school competition uh, this year, 10th Gathering 2012, is the Lagos State University, the second runner up rather, is the Lagos State University. It was actually a few stone tests, you know. And the first one I have is Benson in Elsa University. And the winner of the Tyler Valkyrie Prize for the best school in the school competition of 10th Gathering 2012 is the Federal University of Technology. This is the Tyler Valkyrie Prize. For the first school in the Inter School Competition for the University of Technology and Career, Tech Gathering 2012. Congratulations, Puka. Congratulations, all. So, uh, the second round up for today's uh, pitch session at the Tech Gathering 2012, Computer Science and Engineering Department for all students, Orlando Martin, for our. Congratulations, Solange Martin, Solari. The first one up is Iwa Abulazi, Solari. Color of your name, brilliant idea. Glasses for the dead, brilliant, brilliant idea. Iwa Abulazi, Solari, 10th Gallery 2012. And the best prize for the most viable, uh, most useful, uh, most uh, economically feasible and innovative idea. You know, we're looking for that one thing that doesn't exist, that is simple, workable, useful, and you know, has great economic value. That price goes to Mark of Jew, Uruwaka, Leo, that is on behalf of Edison and Nigeria, and Facebook on telecommunications, the guy has uh, such a fantastic price to be working that work. So thank you very much for your participation on all the souls. Everybody also for your podcast, Black Entertainment, you have been wonderful partners of this event. And there's a gaming competition that is still going on. I don't know how much, if that is still open or what. So, I mean, you can still win the prize, you know. So, if you don't have to play good football. On behalf of everyone, the host institution of the Oval University, uh, all partners, Between the competition venue of Innovate Lagos, Microsoft Nigeria, May One Cable Company, and all partners, I want to say a very big, big thank you for making 10th Gathering 2012 a success. Thank you very much for your